thank you, Lord Jesus. Sule bragado sala bragadish. Thank you, Father. Be thou exalted, be thou glorified. Matthew chapter 12, verse 36 to 37. Matthew chapter 12, 36 to 37. Malubra katala But I say unto you, that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account. Thereof in the day of judgment. For by words thou shalt be justified, and by thy own words thou shalt be condemned. Huh. By every idle word. The realm God has taken you and I to is not a realm of idleness. It's not a realm when you don't speak, you speak, but your word must not be idle. In other words, your word should not come empty. Your word should not come empty. That when you speak, it should carry a force. When you say a word, it should carry a force. That's why it's called a word, not just words. So you don't just speak words, you speak word. It could be it could be ten sentences, but when you speak it, it carries an authority in the realm of the spirit. I do word. When you when a man of God that knows what it is to speak, speaks. You might make ten sentences, but in heaven it is considered a word. Now what is something you said that makes things happen? A word. God. I pray that as we go through these three days and as we begin to end but spread in things of God that our words will not just fall to the ground. It will go forth and accomplish the reason and purpose for which it is spoken. I want us to begin to graduate from the realm of mere word to the realm of effective word. That when we speak, heavens will shake up. When we speak, the earth will tremble. That men and women will hear your word and they will say, don't just speak because we know if you say a word it must surely happen. That is the realm we are going to. That our words will not just be empty words. Our words shall be encapsulated with divinity. We be, we carry supernatural power and effectiveness. In the name of I pray for us. Our words will no longer be empty. When we speak, let things happen. When we speak, let the heaven open. When we speak, let it quick. I command you carry words. I say carry word. In the name of Jesus, your word will no longer be empty. Your word shall be quick, shall carry power. Your word shall carry understanding. Your word shall make heaven speak. Your word shall make the earth tremble. Going forward, we don't just come to three days for nothing. We are coming to the world shall be formed. Our life shall be formed. In the name of Jesus, receive word to speak unto your generation. Your word will no longer be ordinary. I command your word to carry effect. I command your mouth to carry effect. I command your word to carry power. Going forward. In the name of Jesus. Jesus, um, receive it now. Receive it now. In the name of Jesus, um, you are yet by delivered from idle words. Amen. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. I welcome you all to the second day of this meeting. And I've been indicting on this matter. Indicting on it. That I can't just be speaking mere words. That my words should, if I must speak, I will speak words that will literally bring grace. The Bible is a word that will bring grace to the hearers. That when men hear it, it graces their heart. It anoints their heart. We don't just speak ordinary. We have come to the time whereby we need to start making effect. See, that's why hyperlists don't don't believe the word of a Christian. If you say, yeah, when you tell them this will happen, you say, no, no, forget about it. Just say, you're just making empty noise. Because we have not been able to be trained in our spirit man to carry word. <laughs> to carry word. That wherever we go, we carry word. 
word that will cause effect in the realm of the spirit and cause the earth to tremble. That hence for the herbalists will talk to you and be trembling. I'll ask you not to speak because when you speak, things will happen. You'll be scared that when you come and see something, it happens. Elijah came from somewhere to me. Kalima Malabu Shaba. He came from the juniper tree where he encountered God and appeared to Abraham. Ab Ahab and said there shall be no rain for these days. He didn't even say for three and a half days. Three and, three and a half years, sorry. He said there shall be no rain for these days. <laughs> so, the, the, how many days he wants it not to rain depends on him. As long as he has not been able to say this is the days or the years to be. The Ahab and Jezebel, the whole nation have to wait. If he decides to be 20 years, it should socially be. What? His words were honored by heaven and the earth answered. I pray for us. They won't just come to these three days, this, this time, and just and just go home ordinarily. That our words will begin to matter. Where we go, we to, they will begin to shake and say, These men have come. Men have troubled nations and kingdoms with their words. In the name of Jesus. You see, one of the reasons why our words don't carry power because we just speak empty words. If, if that power was given to us, that means we can kill, every, we can kill everyone in the world. Am I communicating? We can just say things, oh, oh, we don't mean it. Meanwhile, we just say it, we don't mean it, but it happens anyway. Because in heaven, there is no idle word. Praise God. If it must not happen, God will not say it. If it must happen, God will say it. Because once he says it, it happens. <laughs> Amen. Okay, what am I saying all this? Let's go about our theme for today. Um, our theme for the three days um, the team says high soap and, and I kind of uh, dash a type of application for the blood of Jesus. Part two, it's a type of application. A type of the blood or application, whatever can is it, can also be seen as a, <clears throat> the blood type of the blood or type of application of the blood. Amen. Amen. So this part two of it, and I want us to go a little bit, you know, see how God will help us. Let's let me start from Revelation. Chapter 12, verse 11. Give me 12, 11. It's a popular place. Let me start with that. that one. It says, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. And by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto death. As a matter of fact, this is supposed to be actually be my context for the three days, but that's fine. But that's why yesterday we talk about the blood so much, the high soap, the type of the blood. Today we'll talk about the word of their testimony. Amen. Tomorrow we shall talk about some other things. The word of their testimony. The word of their testimony. So yesterday we spoke so much about the blood of the lamb, you know. And we saw in, a, let's go to where we start off yesterday, where we stopped yesterday, where we began yesterday, in Leviticus 14, 1 to 7. Leviticus 14, 1 to 7. I will come back to this place again. Leviticus 14, 1 to 7. Give me Leviticus 14. 14. Just keep going because of time. Keep going. I'm going to the place. I think it should be verse, should be verse 4, whatever. Keep going. Verse 4, 5. Keep going. So lay my Okay, good. Four. And they and de, then shall the priest command to take for him that that is to be cleansed two birds, alive and clean, and cedar wood and scarlet and hyssop. And I explain to all that cedar wood is a typology of the cavalry. Wood, type of the cavalry, and scarlet, scarlet is usually red, it's a typology of the blood, and then high soap is the application of the blood. Remember, we talk about the basin that, that when the animal was killed, you know, the pastor was killed, the blood was spit into a basin and God commanded them to use a bunch of high soap dip into the basin and actually, as the other word for it, that was Mary, now for it is sprinkling. Sprinkling the blood on the lintel and on the doorpost. And by so doing, when the lost executioner will come, he will just pass over. He will not touch the house. As long as they were indoors, even though the buildings could have belonged to Egyptians, as long as they were devolved and they were there, 
and the blood is on the lintel and on the doorpost, smeared or sprinkled by a bunch of high soap, the place is free. So, having said that, I want to talk about the application, which is what I call the word of their testimony. Now, why am I referring or bringing high soap with the word of their testimony together? You know, amen. I want to explain better. You can take it off now. So, I will take us back to Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. You don't have to open it. So, I'm linking high soap with the word of their testimony. With the word of their testimony. I will explain to you why I'm linking them. Amen. So, we talked about the blood yesterday. Today, we're going to talk about um, the, the blood yesterday. We're talking about the high soap. High soap. In other words, the actual application of the blood or the sprinkling of the blood. You know, and I'm linking it to word of their testimony. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. I know you say what you're trying to say. <laughs> Amen. First of all, um, let me define additional meaning of high soap again. It's a small, bushy, aromatic plant of the mint family. You know, mint leaves. You know, another one says a white shrub of uncertain identity whose twig were used for sprinkling in ancient Jewish rites of purification. So this additional meaning of, you know, high soap. Now, um, when we talk about the word of their testimony, the angel, the actually Michael and his entourage that cast the devil out, they didn't just go on the premise of the blood alone, of the scarlet alone. Yes, the lamb was slain before the foundation of the world. Agreed. But as long as the lamb is just there in the basin, in the basin, and without its application, it's not going to work. Or it was not going to work. That is why it was needful for the angels to also do something else. To also speak or do something which is called the word of their testimony. <laughs> Praise God. So, the word of their testimony is a type of high soap. It's a type of application. It's a type of sprinkling. So, when they use the word of their testimony, they were simply applying the blood. Because if the blood that was slain is just there by itself, please follow me, I'm going somewhere. It's just there, it's a typology of the blood in the basin. But when the high soap is put on it and smeared or sprinkled on the lintel and the door, then becomes an application. So until the blood is smeared or sprinkled, it is not applied. And then the, in the lost executioner will pass. And when it, as long as it, it sees the blood, it will pass. If it does not see the blood, it will destroy the house. So why, I, I, though they got the power from the blood of the lamb, but if the blood is just there, how would they defeat this force. They defeated the force by application. And the application was to use the word of that testimony. That of tells us that words are powerful. Word is powerful. Words are powerful. As long as it carries a testimony. It carries a testimony. As long as it carries a testification. As long as it carries a witnessing of what has happened and transpired. It's going to work. Now, in Old Testament, they will literally take an high soap and smear it on the lintel and dust on dust up. But in the New Testament, we're not required to go and begin to catch plant somewhere and catch someone and begin to put in the blood, physical blood. We no longer celebrate bull, goats, and, and kind of things and pigeons. We no longer keep those things. The blood of Christ was spilled once and for all. It's our eternal sacrifice. It's our holy sacrifice. It is just done once and for all. So do we begin to pursue plants everywhere no the only way to bring to effect and bring to manifestation of the blood of jesus that was spit on the cross of calvary is by application by the word of our testimony in other words we are testifying the fact that we are now born again the holy ghost feed and we can begin to proclaim god's word and begin to apply the blood and by application of god's word in relation to the blood of jesus things begin to happen that's what happened to them they did not have to go and use high soap the angel to drive out you know, lucifer and his entourage they simply apply the word of that 
testimony. What were they testifying about? They were testifying that Jesus Christ indeed was slain before the war began and they began to apply the slain blood to begin to, 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 to drive out the Lucifer and his, and, his, and his cohort. The same way, we must use the same principle that this angel used. They apply the blood. The, the, the blood is dead. They also spoke the word of their testimony. Testifying that indeed the lamb was slain and they testified to it. They applied it and it came to pass that the foes were defeated. So, if you must handle the demons of our time, we will not just see the blood and be looking at it with our physical eyes, with eyeball to eyeball, or looking at it with our, no, no, oh, oh, the blood of Jesus is beautiful, it looks beautiful. No, we must be able to apply it. We want to apply it, we'll go and use the high soap to begin to smear our doorstep physically, our lintel, no, or smear our forehead, no. What do we do be to release the word of our testimonies? But so do you, you are applying the blood, the word. That testimony. Now, I begin to look at definitions. Amen. Um, to make it make it look to make it look bring it home. Let me start. Let me use this. Let me go to um, just to bring it home. Let me go to Hebrew chapter three, verse one to six to bring it home. So now, when I begin to explain, define something. Hebrew chapter three, verse one to six. Give it to me. Amen. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and the high priest of our profession. Consider the, the apostle and the high priest of our confession, Jesus Christ. High, now, for you to make a word of a testimony, or to, because testimony and profession are the same. <laughs> confession, testimony, and profession are the same. Maybe I should define the dictionary definition of it too that we can be in one page. You can, you can take it off for now. I will still go back to that place. Now, what is the meaning of profession? High priest of our profession. Profession dictionary say is an act of declaring. Act of declaring. That's profession. That one has a particular feeling or one quality. Amen. Especially when this is not the case. Profession can be a career. That's an hour. But when it comes in terms of words, you say, well, it's not even the case. <laughs> in other words, your circumstances don't prove it. Your situation does not show it. But you profess it anyway. Am I making sense? You say it anyway. You say, well, your circumstance does not show it. But you profess it. That number two, the confession. What does confession mean? Because some version calls it confession. High priest of our confession. It says, a statement setting out essential religious doctrines. A statement, declaration, making a statement, saying something. This is a statement. Then what then is testimony? Testimony is a formal written or spoken statement. You see, they all agree. Three of them agree in one. Profession, confession, testimony. They all agree in one. That testimony is a confession. It's a spoken word, a statement. That confession is a statement. That profession is a statement. In other words, and then the profession goes forth to say that your circumstances might not be what is what you what are confessing, but what are professing, but profess it anyway. Amen. So, when I use profession, confession, testimony, they all talk about the same thing. The same thing, the same thing. The high priest of our profession. Take me to that place again. Take me to that Hebrew. Amen. Am I making sense? Amen. Hebrew 3, 1 to 6. Now, he said, wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession. No, now, it shows very clearly that for your profession or confession or your, or your testimony to carry effect and power, number one, you must have a high priest. There must be a high priest, a high priest, a high priest, a high priest, someone who is the, a high priest and also a sacrifice. These two things must be involved, a high priest and also a sacrifice. The Bible says a high priest, Jesus Christ. So if you are making a confession, a profession, a testimony, and there is no high priest who is in charge of your words, the charge of your confession, you are just making idle words. But when a high priest is involved, then you begin the work and the sacrifice is meant, is there, because he's a high priest of a high priest out of our profession. There must be a high priest backing what you are saying, backing your profession, backing your confession, backing your testimony. We can see the angels hand the blood of the lamb. That was what was backing a, a Jesus Christ and the blood and the sacrifice. And then we began to make a profession or confession or testimony. Jesus was backing them up. 
So, you must have a high priest of our profession. Now, if, you're, if you are professing, you can take it off right now. And our high priest is Jesus Christ. Now, if your professional confession and your testimony or your witnessing are not in resonance or in agreement with the high priest, then you are speaking idle words. Amen. You are speaking idle words. If what you are saying is not agreement uh, with the high priest, uh, because what's called a profession, you see, is one in charge of our words, uh, is one in charge of the word of God, is one in charge of what we say. Since it's the high priest of what we say, the high priest of his word, uh, the high priest of his scripture, the high priest of our life, uh, therefore what you say must be in agreement with what the high priest is saying. Shalom, I'm going somewhere. Shikadabalaba. <laughs> Okay, now it is very important that even though we have the high priest, we have the sacrifice, we have the blood, it is very important for us to profess, to profess, to profess, very important for us to, to, to say something, to say something, to make statement. Not just say because the high priest is there and the blood is there, you just be moving like zombie. No, that's need for confession, that's a need for profession, need for witnessing, need for testimony. You want to testify, and your testimony must be an agreement men with the high priest uh, must be in agreement with the blood of sacrifice uh, before your words will carry power if we make words uh, without having a high priest over your word uh, if we make words without having a high priest over a blood or a sacrifice uh, but what you say your what you are saying is a mere word uh, it does not carry power because as a high priest looking out your words uh, a high priest over there looking over your words uh, if your words are not in consonance in agreement with the word the high priest is saying what the high priest has spoken what the blood is speaking because the blood speaks anyway what he's saying is what you are confessing and professing and testifying is not in agreement with what the blood is speaking about uh, what the blood the blood has been sprinkled on uh, if it's not in consonance uh, therefore your words are just mere words uh, they don't carry power they don't carry force uh, your words of profession must be in agreement with the high priest because the high priest of our profession amen now was when I stand and speak a word uh, and say God bless you I'm saying God bless you because I have a high priest uh, I have a high priest uh, his name is called Jesus Christ of Nazareth I have a sacrifice of the blood uh, I have the blood of Jesus uh, who speaks better things uh, when I speak God's word I say God bless you my word that God bless you that's a high priest watching over it uh, that's a sacrifice that we made for that God bless you that's a blood speed uh, speaking for that God bless you that's what gives it power that's what gives your word power that's what gives someone efficacy by so doing your confession is powerful your testimony is heavy am i coming at you your speakings are heavy they don't just come and come the same because high priest is watching over it that's a sacrifice over you what you are saying what you are saying is carrying effect because i say high priest watching over it and making sure it comes to pass and my communicating therefore your words should not be idle your words should not carry emptiness because you have a high priest over it everything you say and speak that's a high priest that should watch over it and make sure it comes to pass listen and gentlemen the word we are in is full of spirits it's either you speak in consonance with evil spirit or you speak in consonance with the holy spirit some a spirit must watch over your words a spirit must make your word come to pass if not your word is ordinary. How, how do you think that uh, the, the evil spirit or the, the so-called altar we see, the altar you see, you go and make altar, pick, make some pronouncement on the altar. What, what, what makes it effective? What makes it powerful? It's our high priest uh, that makes our words powerful. You see, a balance making contention, divination, uh, and say some things. Uh, of himself, he has no power. He just said because he's a high priest in their own kingdom, he has someone who's going to make the work come to pass. Uh, that a spirit that enforces those words. Uh, that is a high priest. Uh, that all time we don't just come to the altar and speak idle words. When we speak words, our high priest of our confession, our sacrifice, our blood, that speak better things, the blood of Jesus, should be able to enforce our words. In other words, your words are backed by the high priest. Am I making sense? Am I making sense here tonight? That your I'm just to, to prove to us that we should bring to to understand these things that we're not just ordinary. We have a high priest after our words. We have a sacrifice after our words. We have the blood of the speak better things of our words. That we don't just speak ordinarily. A herbalist will tell you, I will deal with you. When he says it, he goes to this altar. I mean to make incantation. It's not him that will deal with you. It's his own high priest who's in charge of 
of his words that will make it to bring to pass. It's his own high priest and the sacrifice he has made in the altar that will make his work come to pass. Of himself as a human being, he has no power, but the spirit behind his words is what makes his work powerful. The same way as Christians, we have a high priest and we speak on the altar that makes sure what to speak come to pass. We have a sacrifice when we speak here, the sacrifice speaks up, the blood speaks up, and make sure what to say in causing up with the sacrifice comes to pass. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, I submit to you, your words are not ordinary. <laughs> they are backed by the high priest, backed by the blood, backed by the sacrifice. The sacrifice, the high priest of our profession. Now, what, what to say has a high priest backing it. What to speak has a high priest backing it. What to confess has a high priest backing it. Your testimony has a high priest backing it. Therefore, the angels were able to defeat those Lucifer because because the blood is there speaking and they spoke the testimony of the blood and they defeated them. Therefore, what am I trying to say tonight? I am saying our words should not be ordinary. We have a high priest of our profession. Some version says confession. Some version puts that way, high priest of our confession. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Let me be fast because my time is fast spent. Let me show us one scripture, one few scriptures, and we pray. So, am I coming? I'm making sense. My point is, our words as Christians should be so powerful. What to do should be so powerful because we have a high priest of our profession. How can a profession have a high priest? Have you ever thought about it before? How can a profession have a high priest? It's not a profession as a career. Profession, what to say, what to confess. Your testimony has a high priest. How am I That's what makes your words as Christians powerful. It's not just, um, not because I have power myself. I'm not here because I can say something. It's because I have something backing me. It's the high priest of our profession. What I confess here, of the testimony I carry, is the one backing me up. It's the one, when I say what, it carries the word and makes your concern pass. It's the high priest of your profession. High priest of your confession. High priest of your testimony. Am I making sense? If anybody is speaking words, does not belong to Abba, does not belong to Jesus, your words are empty. Because there's nothing backing it. The question is, do you have a high priest? So, when you tell me, Brother Michael, uh, if you do this, I will do this. I will ask you a question. Who is backing you? <laughs> I'm not making sense. Who is backing your words? If you tell me, Jesus Christ, I say, okay, please, sorry, I'm, I'm sorry. Because I know something will happen. Or how about he tells you, I will deal with you. Ask him who is backing you. If he says, uh, whatever they call it, Marie, whatever they call it, begin to beg him. Oh. Beg him because he has a high priest of his own kingdom backing his words. They say, well, we Christians have a high priest. So if I tell you about this, I will show you Pepe. That means I'm going to my altar tonight to speak. And the high priest of my confession, of my profession, what I make statement, my declaration, we deal with him. And what makes it more important, most powerful when I read was when he says, when this Jesus says that you are declaring something that sort of says it's not happening. It's not, you're not seeing it, but you keep declaring. You keep speaking. You keep speaking. As long as the high priest is there, he makes it happen. <laughs> when I read this place in dictionary, I say, How did they come to this? He says, Especially when it is not the case. Let me read it again. He says, An act of declaring that one has a particular feeling or quality, especially when it is not the case. <laughs> that is what that's that's who we are as Christians because we are we are we're not just spirit, soul, and body, we also have circumstances around us. So there are three issues we are dealing with. Soul, spirit, and body, and circumstances. Am I communicating? So, your soul, spirit, and body, my, my soul, okay, I'm feeling this way, but does your circumstance feel that way? <laughs> Am I communicating? Am I communicating? Does your situation feel it? No. But why do we make it? You see, we have to graduate from place things, uh, staying, allow things to happen, and making things to happen. I repeat, we have to graduate from allowing things to happen, but making things happen. By what? Professing, confessing, testimony, the word of their testimony, encounter, what has happened, what are you saying, what are you speaking to effect? Yes, I know my circumstance is not showing it, I know my situation is not showing it, but what am I saying, what am I speaking, if I speak it, may a high priest, high priest of my speaking, high priest of my profession, high priest of my testimony, will make it happen to my circumstances. Am I making sense? That's why you should speak anyway because you're not the one bringing it to pass. It's your high priest making it happen.
happen. I'm not making sense. Up. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, I want to announce to you that your words are orders. <laughs> your words are orders. You cannot just speak your word anyhow and believe it won't come to pass. No, 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 no. It might not be happening right now in your brain, but the high priest is working on it. <laughs> it is job to work on it. Not your own job to work. Your own is to speak. Your place is to speak. And the high priest is to work on it and bring it to pass. We have a high priest of our profession. And my coming at him, he therefore tells you, brothers and sisters, keep speaking, keep speaking, keep, keep talking, keep talking, because someone is watching over it. Someone's duty is to bring to pass, and his name is called Jesus. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He say if you believe, he said, whether you believe, ah, Yagados will come to pass. Zabragado Shabayaba. So all things are possible to them that believe. All things are possible. They that believe and make confession. You might believe, but not confessing it does not happen. It's in your confession and profession that makes it happen. Shut I will confess. Mm. Okay. Let me wrap up. Give me um. Ooh. Give me this scripture. Give me um give me Psalm 107 verse 2. Psalm 107 verse 2. Let listen. <laughs> Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Whom he had redeemed for the hand of the enemy. Please take this hope. Friends. The day you become born again, child of God, Holy Ghost filled, that's the day God redeemed you. He brought you back. And he's saying, you don't just remain there. He said, say say something. (laughs) If you have been redeemed, say it. You're going to give me this, right? (laughs) No, no. (laughs) Which one? Okay, I thought you were giving me a sign. (laughs) He said, said, let the redeemed Lord say so. You don't just come again and I'm born again. No, what are you saying? What is your word of testimony? What is your professional testimony? What is your witnessing? What are you saying concerning your circumstance? Your soul, spirit, and body may agree, but your circumstance is not agreeing. What do you how do you change your circumstance? How do you make it work? Let the redeemer of the Lord say something. So issue of I believe, I believe, I believe. Okay, you believe. Have you said something? No. So whom he had redeemed. From the hands of the enemy. Sometimes, let me say, ninety-nine percent of the time we are already redeemed. Or let me say, hundred percent. Let me say, ninety-nine. Hundred percent of the time we are already redeemed for the hands of enemies. But our circumstance does not prove it. He said to confirm it, for example, and Bob was saying, "Yet you are sick. You are here, not detail. Yes, you are detail. <laughs> you are, your circumstance is not showing you are sick. You are detail. You are suffering to failure. Yet you are experiencing failure. Why? Circumstance." And I was wondering how dictionary this English dictionary is. Why did he say something that was that was what even touched me most? I will say it again: an act of declaring that one has a particular feeling, <laughs> quality, especially when it is not the case. That dictionary, dictionary is like a problem. Then who wrote it? I'm born again. <laughs> no, that's not I'm born again. <laughs> Praise the Lord. He says when it's not the case, and that is the situation of a believer. I believe, I believe, I believe, yet your second situation does not show it. So, those of them who don't understand that they have a high priest of their profession, they begin to give up. Nah, this is not the work. Oh. That's not the work. I've been in fellowship for that, uh, I like, maybe five years or two years or three years. They've been telling me this, I should, I should believe, I believe, I don't the work. <laughs> Go on and tell them it's working. There's a high priest over your profession. Just keep talking, keep talking, keep talking. Because you are graduated from the realm of waiting to the realm of making things happen. Friends, your words are meant to make things happen. You carry creative words. Your words are meant to be creative. It might take some time because we live in time. But you can't be comparing your words spoken like that of God the Father because it lives in eternity. We live in time. Because we live in time, our time controls what we say. So what do we do? Is to keep talking. Keep talking. Why the high priest keep working on it? Keep talking. Keep talking. Keep talking. Keep speaking. Keep doing what you're doing. Don't just close your mouth. A closed mouth is a closed miracle. Am I making sense? A closed mouth is a closed move of God. Until you say it does not happen. 
It does not matter how much you believe, but you must say. Look at what says in Romans chapter 10, verse 9 to 11. Give me Romans chapter 10. Let me, I'm uh, shaka told you about my time. It's first point. I want to try rather. Romans 10, 9 to 11. I am a man, give it to me. Romans 10. Quickly, quickly. I'm about to rub. It says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So it's not just believing. Also, you have to confess it. <laughs> so your confession, your profession, and your testimonies must be aligned. You must say it with your mouth. You can say, mm, I believe, mm, I believe. <laughs> you have to say it out to your mouth and confess. I believe. Amen. And that scripture I will give you so we can close is um, that should be last scripture. Tomorrow we shall go deeper. Last one. Eh? Okay, that's why I've uh, got what I need. Don't worry about the 11th part of it. Don't worry. First of time. But give me the last scripture. Um, Numbers 14. Just give me that one. I will uh, leave the rest. 14, 28. Thank you, ma'am. Am I making sense? Am I communicating? He says, so, say, say unto them truly, so, so, say unto them as truly as I live, say the Lord, as ye have spoken in my ears, so will I do to you. Amen. Hey! Do you see that? Please, can you write this down? Some of you are not writing that. You're just looking. I see you have computer, computerized brain. <laughs> you don't that. I will ask you what, tomorrow I will ask you the quotation tomorrow. All of us. This is better cram it now. Tomorrow I will ask you, what was what's our memory verse for today? Numbers 1428. I will repeat again. He say, as truly as I live, imagine God's worry. Say the Lord. As ye have spoken in my ears, so will I do to you. So, what stops you from speaking? <laughs> so, who does it? I, the Lord said, I will do it. So, is the priest of our confession, the high priest of our confession, is lifted up there, high, high above other priests. High priest is not for priest or high one. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. I won. The one is very high. Higher than all the priests. He has gone beyond priests and powers. He's seated in the office of the Christ. He's the one in charge of what you speak. Your speakings. Your words. So what would you stop speaking? Say, as you say, so shall I, say, so shall I do. To my ear. So friends, each time you're confessing, professing, testimonial, testimonial, <laughs> the ears of the high priest are open. Some of them are waiting for you to say something. Say something. Remember the angels? Christ said, Oh, even because I'm going to die. If I say what now, angels will land. I could manage an angel watching and say, Master, talk now. Master, talk. Master, talk. Talk. If God, the angels have said, Angel, they <laughs> will land and destroy the palace or the hall. But Jesus didn't say anything. So he waited for his words. That shows words are powerful. Speakings are powerful. Declaration is powerful. So when you go home tonight, bless your husband, bless your wife, bless your children. Begin to confess, profess, and begin to declare some things. Don't say because your baby is misbehaving. That is a circumstance. The point is what are you declaring unto him? Well, say your daughter is strewing here and there. Fine, that is a case around here. But, but, but the point is you as a child of God, what are you speaking? Don't say your husband God is doing this and doing that. That is fine. That is your case. That's the situation that's not working yet. You as a child of God, the name of the Lord, what are you saying? What are you speaking? Remember you are the high priest of the Lord. That is the application of the blood. It's not going to carry a bunch of high soap. I mean to smell your head and your body. That is not what it is. That is Old Testament. Now a New Testament how to apply the blood in your life is to speak what the word is speaking. What the blood is speaking. The Bible says the blood speaks. What is the blood speaking? What is the blood speaking? You want to ask me a question? What is blood speaking? What the blood is speaking is God's word. Everything God has said is what the blood is speaking. And how do you apply it? You apply it by confessing it. You apply it by professing it. You apply it by, by, tes by testimony. It. You bring to testimony. It becomes the word of your testimony. This is my testimony. This is my witnessing. This is my profession. This is my confession. This is who 
who I am. This is what I want to be. You say it, and by so doing, you are walking like Archangel Michael and his entourage, who did not just defeat Lucifer and his entourage, but the blood alone, they defeated him by speaking, sir, by telling Lucifer a words of our testimony, words of our profession, words of our confession. And when they were saying it, the high priest was carrying it out. And that's how Lucifer was dismantled. You think actually Michael is more powerful than Lucifer no than the same ranking but what brought that power was the blood and the words of that testimony that confession when they say I will deal with you they were confessing what the blood is speaking when David said today you will see what I do to you I will cut off your head he was speaking in consonance what the blood is speaking speak what the blood is speaking that is the word of your confession that is the word of your testimony and by so doing it every enemy in your life shall be destroyed I see that power destroyed I see those which is destroyed. Uh, I see those manifestations of the devil destroyed. Uh, in the name of Jesus, um, we serve the true living God. Uh, who they say me yesterday, they say me today, they say forevermore. If God has done it for them, um, who done it for uh, the Michael is entourage uh, to defeat the devil, God will do it for you. I see you overcoming your enemies. Uh, I see you dealing with your enemies. Uh, I see you overcoming them by the blood, by the words of your profession, uh, by the words of your confession. Jump on your feet and begin to declare, be to profess, uh, be to declare. What do you want God to do? Are you in the camp of the enemy? What are you believing God uh, to do in the camp of the enemy? What are you confessing? What are you declaring? What are you speaking? Uh, are you just there believing in your heart? No, 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 no. You must confess with your mouth uh, that Jesus Christ is Lord. Uh, what are you confessing here? Uh, what are you professing? Irrespective of your circumstances, uh, irrespective of your situation, uh, what are you saying? Uh, it's your turn to speak. Uh, it's your turn to speak. Uh, it's your turn to declare. It's your turn to make. Uh, make a statement. Uh, Declare a word. I don't know what's going around with you. If your baby is misbehaving. Speak to your baby. Your circumstances is misbehaving. Speak to your circumstances. Your husband is misbehaving. Speak to your husband. Your, 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 your child is misbehaving. Speak to your child. Your brother is misbehaving. Speak to your brother. Sir. What do you want your sister to be? Like the Michael. They don't know what to do. But they employ the, they deploy the blood. I've been to carry the words of your testimony. And therefore they defeated Lucifer. And my communication is it's your turn. It's your turn. It's your turn. It's your turn to defeat every Lucifer, every enemy against you. Let the redeemer of the Lord say so. Whatever you say, will I do? Whatever you say to my ear, will I do now? Whatever you say to my ear, will I do? That is the Lord speaking. The high priest of our profession. Whatever you say to the Lord, will I do? Whatever you say now, will I do? Whatever you say to my ear, will I do? What are you saying? What are you saying? Saying, what are you saying? Oh, la gada la gada la gada la gada, le la gada la gada la gada la gada, le la gada la gada la gada, le la gada la gada la gada. The high priest of your profession is here. The high priest of your confession is here. The high priest of your witness is here. The high priest of your word of your testimony is here. What are you saying? What are you saying? Let the redeem of the Lord say so. Masuka Baya, the name of Jesus. Amen. Matthew chapter 12. Embrace some prayer point over there. Matthew Gospel chapter 12. Ready before, let's just go. Take me to Matthew 12. Give me Matthew chapter 12 again. Ah, Masuka Tala Bragadosha. Zemana Bosha, you will read 36 to 37. Shemali Mama Nabaya. I want to also take up some prayer point from there. Thank you, Lord Jesus. But I say unto you, every every idle word that men shall speak, which means you can speak idle words, empty words. Now, another thing I want to let us know here, that time will not permit me to explain that again. You see, your words become idle when you don't have enough knowledge about what you're saying, about, about to say. You, you can't just be blah, blah, and everywhere. No, you have to understand what you're saying. Knowledge, the realm of knowledge. So, if your knowledge, if your words are decked and encapsulated with knowledge, then your words will not be idle. Because some of us will speak empty words because our hearts are empty. We don't have, we don't have words, we don't have the Bible in our heart. We don't have scriptures, so they're empty. No knowledge. No understanding. So you speak, I mean, you can speak, only speak what you can, what you understand. Hallelujah. That makes, no, let's leave it for now. So, so I do words that men shall speak, shall give account of it because you are supposed to speak on knowledge base, not just speaking anyhow. However, if you're going to give account of it because, <laughs> that's why let's leave it for now. For thy words, by thy words shall thou be justified. Friends, this is powerful. By thy words. 
you'll be justified. And by your words again shall that be condemned. So if you tell someone, God punish you, that word you just spoke can just be, bring condemnation. If, it's, if you live in eternity, or you come to the point where you are against stature, and you're able to manifest eternity only, may manifest eternity on time. When you say God, what, that what you said that is, will God punish you, it happens instantly. And by reason of stature. You can gain stature and begin to become an immortal. No matter what I mean, begin, begin to walk in the rankings of eternity. Then on earth, will your words carry power. When you say God punish you, God will punish you right away. Punish the person right away. But if your words are not against stature, your life is not against stature, you, you, your words, you don't speak by knowledge. It's just ordinary. Your words will not, they don't carry any effect. Am I coming again? Yes, sir. Want to waste, whereby, whereby we will speak, let our words bring God justification. And if you must speak any words to deal with the enemy, let it happen instantly. Am I making sense? Oh, God. Let my words bring justification. Let my words bring miracles, signs, wonders. Let me not just speak words anyhow anymore. Let your words, as I speak your word, as I profess your word, let it bring miracles, signs, wonders. Let it bring diverse kinds of miracles. Zabrakato Shaba, anoint my words, anoint my words, anoint my words, anoint my words. Let my words, as I speak your word in my mouth, let it carry power, let it carry power, let it carry understanding, let it carry direction. Let us speak me your words. I have a high priest of my profession, high priest of my confession. Oh, I will back my words. I should be careful, be careful what I say, what I speak. The high priest will carry it out. Let my words carry anointing. Lay bagado sakawa. My yanda la bagado sekete. Ye le bagado sakata la bagade. Ye makuta li bagade. Ye babalu kata la bagado. Ye le bagado sakata. My yanda li bagade malabosa. Ye babala gado saya. My yanda la bagado sekete. Ye babalu kete le bagado. Ye zali bagade malabosa. Ye bagado sakata la bagade. Ye babala gado sakata. My yanda la bagado sekete. Ye babala gado sakata. Ye bagado sekete le bagado. Ye babala gado sakata. My yanda la have a high priest of my profession. Have a high priest of my profession. Have a high priest of my profession. La <laughs> In the name of Jesus. Ah, Masukaba. From today, I declare your words will no longer be idle. In the name of Jesus. From today, I pray. Let your work carry force. Let your work carry creativity. Let your work carry power. Let your work carry miracle. Let your work carry signs of wonders. As they speak, as they see. As they speak, as they see. Oh God, anoint my mouth. As I speak, let me see it. Oh, pull your mouth and fire prayer. As I they talk about the sea, 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 as I'm speaking, I'm seeing it. The bagada la gada la gada, the bagada la gada la gada. Because I'm a high priest of my profession, I'm a high priest of my profession. I've been sacrificed made already on my profession. The bagada la gada la gada, and the blood of Jesus sprinkled on my profession. The bagada la gada la gada, the bagada la gada la gada. 
Ghana, 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 Ghana,